Ranchita, South California, September 2011. A hiker was doing a trail when he photographed this wood ape. So the Ranchita area in in South California, it's near the the San Diego area, and it's it's almost desert. I would call it sub sub desertic type. Um, in September, it would be very dry. It's prone to flash floods because the vegetation it's not enough to contain the the rains. So it's 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 a normal occurrence in in sub desertic and desertic types. These flash floods, as you can see, the area is very dry with a very reddish tone to the to the clays and to the to the ground some shrubs it has some some ridges and some peaks you would think that all of this vegetation would would not be, would not conceal such a thing as sasquatch but this is a very high altitude um photograph from google earth so when we go down and see we in the street view uh, some of the some of the areas you can see that um, during spring uh, there's some greens these these shrubs that you think they are shrubs, they are not shrubs. They they are full grown trees. They are not sequoias, of course, not not pines, but uh, numerous species of trees that can go up to 20, 20 feet tall, as you can see. the The photo, and it it does seem to be in this area. Those those photos, they were certainly taken. In a in a dry riverbed, so it could be a place like this. I don't know if this place that we are seeing it's it's probably a riverbed, but um, it it has the it has some game for sure. It has deer uh, and lots of food for sure. Here we can see a riverbed with. Uh, with trees and much like what we 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 were seeing on the photos with lots of clutter lots of debris and trunks and dried trunks that are that are uh, that are brought by the by the flash floods so i would guess the hiker was doing the um, the riverbed he was walking on the riverbed and the photo was taken on the trees and in the river bank near the the river bed where he was walking as you can see there were two photos taken um, this is the first one you can see the mountains on the background all the clutter and all the trees broken from the river bank um, you can see the dry mountains down there and it, it it seems to be it seems to be the area i can i cannot relate this photo in this type of vegetation to any other uh, habitat and to any other area than that of the ranchita the ranchita area so this these photos of this wood I it's to me probably one of the most compelling photos and one of the best evidence that is about Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Always people always complain that the photos are blurred, that they are not sharp, always out of focus. So here you have a completely focused photo, although in, in profile. 
So it's not a head-on, face-on photo, but it's completely sharpened. And still, people dismiss this photo as a hoax. So I'm going to talk about the, the claims of being a hoax. And people claim that it's a photoshopped gorilla in that they photoshopped a, a gorilla in this photo and there are a few videos i think a three-part video of think Ta thinker thunker um explaining and debunking this the it it would have been very difficult to photoshop this photo into the background with all of that clutter with all of those branches it's it's perfect all the colors in the in the hair um of the sasquatch are they completely match the light the angle of the light the colors of the of the branches and the tree trunks nearby so it's completely out of question so by then people started to say that it was taken in a zoo because san diego has a as the the city zoo and there's like a, um, a safari park outside and they say that this was taken there with the zoom lens so i will debunk that also because this was not taken in any zoo of the world and i will explain why So here we can see the, the San Diego Safari Park. You can judge by the photos. It's a very wide place with lots of space for animals. People go in, in pickup trucks and feed the giraffes. As you can see, lots of photos on Google. You just need to, to check up on Google. Now... A wide photo from the place with lakes, lots of grass. Although on the on the on the background you can see the mountains from the from South Calif South California. So that's why the guys told that those mountains on the photos they could be in the safari park. Uh, but remember, guys, these grass, these all these bushes are are in. They have water. They have water all year round. That that's why they they keep these these bushes green. You see, all of these photos, all of this area. This is all. Escondido. Okay. So this elephant and this is this is in <laughs> in the in the savannah in Africa, not in San Diego Wild Park. Another photo from the area. It's basically basically the same. So now we will see the enclosure of the of the gorillas. So as you can see, this is the enclosure at the San Diego Safari Park. I will show you some better photos that you can see here. This is depicting um, on the news where a, a stray dog went into the enclosure of the gorillas. I don't know how, how the dog went there. I guess he, he jumped inside the pit because there's a pit in front and the dog jumped from the the people's visitors visitors area to the to the pit and then into there they get they get they got to to enclosure the the gorillas inside and then they pick up the dog and the dog is fine it's okay so as you can see only big trees and these all these are fake rocks and you you do not see the kind of clutter that you, you that you were seeing on the photos and i will tell you i will tell you why in every zoo in the world you do not see that kind of clutter and think a tanker said on his video that it was because gorillas throw things at people and uh, people from zoos don't want to don't want the visitors um, harmed but it's it's not it's not because of that at least the biggest part the biggest part is because of 
it's hygienic and the hygiene it in when you have when we have captive animals you have to keep to keep him in enclosures that you can clean you can disinfect you can you can have a, uh, some kind of a protocol to take all the fleas all the ticks easily and the more you have of clutter with trunks and rocks and and hidden burrows and uh, all of those crevices where the those those fleas and those ticks can hide worse it's worst so they if you if you if you're gonna see photos from all over the world all the enclosures of the of the gorillas of the of the lions all of those enclosures are like that because it's easy to clean and all the rocks are put in place because they are polymer they are like done with cement and plastic and as you can see down there there's like a wall and in that wall there are some doors where they can go in and this wall is also keeping the gorillas from going out it's it's so they have a pit in the in the front and like a big wall on the back that they can they can't climb so there are there there are there is no place in this enclosure in the safari park even when it's more green there is n n nowhere near the the kind of of clutter and trunks and sticks um, piled together like in those photos and there's no zoo in the world that will keep um, big gorillas in an enclosure like that so back to google earth we can see on street view we can see the enclosure of the gorillas on the safari park we can see the people's area where they uh, where there is a pit separating the area from the gorillas from the from the tourists and uh, from the visitors you can see down there on the, those big and high walls you can see the the doors when they where the gorillas can go into their indoor cages and all the trees are enormous big stumps no clutter and because of that that i told you the, the the those hygiene protocols so here you can see from above you can see the wall made in the pit here is the pit and then the wall all around made with those cement rocks so the gorillas cannot go anywhere uh, beyond those rocks so there is no place like on those photos here you cannot take neither with a zoom lens neither with uh, anything you cannot reproduce those photos in the san diego safari park you can see here the all the all the safari all the the safari zoo and it's a it's a wide place in the in north of, of san diego near the mountains okay so um regarding the other claim about um, it was taken with a zoom lens uh i will i want to address that because tinkatanka i think had made a video debunking that but um i'm going to correct him because he he didn't got that that um, that claim very clear and quite the opposite so it's we have to differentiate about zoom lenses and telephoto lenses big telephoto lenses can be either zoom lenses or just with a fixed um, magnification so zoom lenses telephoto lenses the bigger ones aren't always the ones that magnify the most here you can see um a canon lens a canon 400 mil it's almost 10 times magnification as a binocular 
and it has an aperture of f 2.8 so this cannon and the cannon above which is a 100 and 500 mil this bigger one doesn't magnify more than the than the one above the one above is it's it's more it magnifies more it's it's a 500 millimeters the difference is because in size it's because the 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 the, the capability of gathering light of the lower of the one that is below the, the, the f 2.8 it's bigger so due to their to its bigger objective lens in the front to gather more light it gets bigger but it, it doesn't mean that it magnifies mo more than the other one so when you speak about um, depth of depth of field and uh, why the the supposed gorilla that was photographed it could not be photographed with a zoom it could be photographed with a zoom lens because a zoom lens has a depth of field that uh, can be bigger or can be smaller so as you can see on this on this picture when you have a shallower depth of field like an f 2.8 you have lots of light and you can have the subject you can have you can have in focus the subject and all the background you can like do a very soft bouquet it 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 can be out of focus it it is it's very used by by by, by pro photographers to do portraits and to put out of focus all all the background you can do it in wildlife but you can do this or you can do a, a photo with a more depth of field of f11 or f20 or f30 32 and you can have all basically all the depth in field in focus and all of these can be do with a zoom lens also but that's what I wanted to, to tell that Tinker Tanker didn't get that right. The photo could have been with a, a zoom lens, although I don't think so, because the most probable was that the, the people that were hiking were hiking inside the 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 dry riverbed and they, they took some photos to the riverbanks to, to photograph the, the trees, the the some bird i don't know i don't know anything about those photos i would like to know more about how all these how those photos came to me but they could have been with a zoom lens with a i don't think it was a, a very high magnification zoom lens it's pro what was probably like a 100 millimeter um, lens or some portrait lenses but it doesn't really matter it, if it was with a zoom lens or not because the 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 supposed or the alleged gorilla or bigfoot is almost in focus like the the trunks and the shrubs and the branches and you can see the, the even the silhouette of the mountains on the on the on the other side okay this is the ranchita photo most people say and skeptics say it's it's a gorilla um as you can see lowland gorillas are also red in the head and in on his fur but i will share some photos comparing just for you guys to to take notice if you if you notice something different you can see the ears are very similar and even the head you can see that the head profile it's very similar but there's something different to it. The chin and the human chin. And also the chin of a gorilla or a chimpanzee doesn't have a chin like a human chin. And you can see also the nose profile. There's a nose profile here, much more like a human that you don't see in any gorilla. Um, the petty type, yes, petty had, had a nose also but as you can see the nostrils were much more human 
and like the nostrils in in chimpanzees and the nostrils in 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 gorillas are upwards a, a little bit more like these nostrils from the ranchita wood ape but with a hood so this this one as you can see it's not this is not a gorilla by no means the the noses from human beings are are the the hoods are protruding and you can have many many nostrils and many types but the those ones that are upwards like the ranchita wood ape are very very rare uh, although some people some people could have them like here and but they are rare as you can see some some types of noses and some people have some upwards nostrils but it 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 generally is associated with a with a, with a, with a more wood, hooded nose with more cartilage so i i can put you lots of photos of gorillas here and you will never see this nose shaped profile never never as you can see it it doesn't it doesn't they doesn't have this shape profile they don't they, they don't have a chin like like a human chin protruding they don't they don't have a nose it's completely completely different even if you if you had chimps chimps have the same profile without chin completely different as you can see um and it doesn't matter how many photos i i put here then you you will never see you will never see in any in any in any ape a nose like like this one it's it's also visible on this brighter photo the um, the eye ridge and the, the second cavity where you can see the eyes and it, it's 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 also very similar and much more similar to the um, to an ape than to a human and you also see that the the nasal ridge where the cartilage is it's inserted much lower and lower than the eyes um, in humans the, the cartilage in our nose is inserted to the base beneath our eyes so much more in the middle of both eyes so this is a this is a nose that is flatter and it, it's inserted underneath the eyes okay so i really can't tell you guys what 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 it is if it is a wood ape if it is if it is a sasquatch if it is okay i i can't really tell you if this is a sasquatch but i can tell you that this is no gorilla and no chimpanzee and no ape in this planet has a profile face like this one so as you can see on this phylogenetic tree um, humans are in in the branch very near the chimpanzees and the gorillas and 65 to 55 to 65 million years ago um primates had an ancestral primate that each that is m much closer to now what we now know as lemurs and the controversial study dna study from dr melba ketchum they they found that the, on the dna they found that the mitochondrial dna was from a human so an ancestral that was coming from a female human because mitochondrial dna it's it only comes from it only comes from the the human from the mother i'm sorry so uh, and the um, the dna they also had a profile dna uh, from the the father lineage and it came out null or they compare it in the gene bank with millions of millions of sequences that are on gene bank from everything that we know and there was no match and the most similar 
in the study was something um, much more in line with Lambert's. So this is a, a big question. So the more questions and more answers we have, the more questions we we have also. So because if you if you think that this is only a matter of evolution in the planet Earth since say, 60 or 70,000 million years ago, um, you have one type of, of linear thought that you can follow. But if you had another variable to it, that is the, the manipulation of genetic manipulation by star people, by alien races, uh, since those 65 million years ago, you can have a lot more questions to answer and a lot more probabilities of what Sasquatch is. You can even you can even think if Sasquatch is also one species because I can see by all researchers online they say Sasquatch and Sasquatch for them it's it's always the same so they think that they on, only have one species one type of sasquatch in north america when in reality you could have lots of species with uncertain provenience so if you connect it with the ufo phenomena if you relate that sasquatch could even be being brought to to planet Earth by some alien raisin, alien races, you can imagine that other types of Sasquatch evolving in other planets could be brought here and could be different in 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 morphology, in their skeleton, in their in their apparent uh, morphology. They can be different from each other. You can have them like many not so known researchers because they they follow a lot the paranormal stuff so they um, they get uh, pushed aside from from the the scientific community or the supposed scientific community that only can evaluate uh, footprint costs and not much more so some of those researchers have been contacting Sasquatch by they they have mind speaks with Sasquatch and alien races star people and they have said that they had seen different types of Sasquatch more with more ape like and other ones with completely human faces but with hair some of them with more proportionate to human with shorter arms not so uh, heavy built other ones with sagittal crests and and more ape like uh, body types with longer arms so there are a lot of questions to answer um i hope i i hope you like my video I really hope that this video has, has made you think broader and outside the box and it it, 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 it is not meant to give um, or to give answers it is meant for for people to see it and to start thinking by themselves and and to realize that this is a much broader phenomena um, and not, and we are not only guessing if this is Neanderthal or De Denisovan or some kind of a ape that lives in in the forests. So once again, I hope you like it. Thank you very much. See you guys next time.